Thanks for joining us for one final time for 3 and Out here on TV Piedmont Channel 60. I'm your host Brian Carter alongside Ryan Orlovsky. We've come out of retirement once, but this truly is the final episode of 3 and Out. Orlovsky has the rundown. On the opening tip, we hit on UK and the Jody Meek situation. We'll hit up your emails on the seventh inning stretch, and on third down, we share sports' most haunted cities. As always, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us at 3 sports at gmail.com. An email gets you a free 3 and Out pen. We'd love to hear from you. June 25 marks the date of the NBA draft, and it should be a good one with players like Blake Griffin, Hashim Thabit, Stephon Curry, Ty Lawson, Dewan Blair, Tyler Hansborough, Wayne Chisholm, and of course, Jody Meeks. Although Patrick Patterson and Meeks were extremely optimistic about the hiring of John Calipari, neither had made their decisions to continue at Kentucky or leave for the NBA draft. Meeks finally decided to test the NBA waters, and we now decide, should he stay or should he go? Jody Meeks should definitely stay at the University of Kentucky. Most of our viewers know where I stand on this issue, as we had a similar debate a while back on No Sean Marino and Matt Stafford ending the, the NFL draft. It just pains me to see Division I athletes with the free education leaving their college atmosphere, where athletes are basically worshipped. They're moving on before they get their, their degree, and I don't agree with it. Well, as you mentioned, viewers know where you stand. Well, viewers know where I stand, too, because I always say you have one chance at those big bucks. you got to go for it. you got to strike while the iron's hot, especially in an economy like this where nothing's guaranteed. The stock has reached its peak for Jody Meeks, and he can pay for his education later. If he gets hurt in the NBA and ends up being a bust, he can go back and use that money he got in the draft to go pay for the rest of his education. But if he gets hurt now, he's pretty much screwed. I hate to say it, but that's how it goes. And it is, it's not like he's showing his unhappiness with UK either. But he missed, they missed the tournament for the first time since 1991. And, and he's just an extremely an incredible basketball player. 23.7 points per game, led the SEC, eighth in scoring in the nation. And the, the amazing thing about that is he was not even the, the main focus of the offense for UK. So I see no reason why he should not go to the next level. Now, sure makes his stock as high, as you just mentioned, 23.7 points per game this past season, and he's proven that he can pull up and shoot from the perimeter. But other than shooting, his offensive game is fairly limited. I mean, he often struggles to create separation off the dribble, and his ball handling skills are somewhat limited. His defense could also use some improvement, and if he's to, see, to succeed at the next level in the NBA, I mean, he, he's going to need some improvement. And he's relatively small for an NBA shooting guard, too, I might add. You're right. Now, I was going to hit on some of those points later because at first I, I have to mention, you mentioned his perimeter shooting. It's by far incredible. I mean, he's, he's had 54 points in a game against Tennessee. He had 117 three-pointers this past season. From beyond the arc, he shoots 40.6%. At the free throw line, just equally as impressive, 90.2%. But again, his stock is as high as it's going to get. You already said it because you're kind of contradicting yourself here. You just said you agreed that his stock is as high as it's going to get, yet there are those things about him that could hold him back possibly. But I didn't say his stock was as high as it could get. I'm just saying his stock It's at high. its peak. It's at its peak. I don't know if though. it's at its peak because one more year in college, you can, you can improve those defensive skills especially. But we don't know what John Calipari is going to bring to this offense. Okay. Granted, he has the dribble drive motion offense. That's something that even Piedmont College uses. But that may not be successful for Jody Meeks. We don't know how that's going to work out. Little is known when it comes to the NBA draft. It's not like the NFL draft. It is so much different. Blake Griffin, though, is almost guaranteed to lock up that number one pick. But mock drafts um, have that – some of the mock drafts don't even have him as an NBA prospect when you, when you look at Jody Meeks. And then other ones have him late first round, early second round at best. And the ESPN experts, again, say the same thing. Late first round, early second round. 16th, he's the 16th best shooting guard. So, again, I don't see him getting any better than that. With the season that he just had, I don't think his stock can get any higher. So he has to go now. Well, I think, I think when you look at Jody Meeks, I think what these NBA scouts are going to see is the fact that during his sophomore season, he was plagued by injury throughout much of it. And I think that could hurt him in the, in the draft. And therefore, I don't think he's going to get what he thinks he's going to get. I think he's going to be later than maybe even the second round even. And you have to keep in mind all these factors that go into it. As I mentioned, his defense isn't that strong. His ball handling skills aren't that great. His size isn't really up there. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors that he needs to place that another year at school with Calipari. I mean, Calipari spent time coaching at the NBA level. He knows what these athletes at the NBA level need and what they, what they do to succeed up there. So 
I mean, I think he could really improve Jody Meeks. Well, you're taking some cheap shots here. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a little shorter. He lacks the height. He lacks the extreme athleticism. But, again, scouts are impressed with the guy's shooting range. It's undeniable. But this is a chance where, as you see a lot of NBA players go, a lot of NBA prospects, they use the NBA workouts as a chance to impress these teams. And Jody Meeks has that, that opportunity. The biggest thing also is that you have to consider the talent he's going up against in his position. Patrick Patterson, not, not really – He's one that it would be in his better interest to stay at UK because he has a lot of competition going for him. But in the shooting guard position, you know, he's 16th best right now. I really, truly think that's as good as it's going to get for Jody Meeks. With the season he just had, I don't think he can top that at all. 23.7 points a game with a new coach coming in. You're likely not going to be the main. He wasn't already, he already wasn't the main focus of the of the offense anyways before when Gillespie was there. But then you throw in John Calipari and it's going to be a whole new ballgame. We don't know where he's going to go with that. And we don't, we don't know what other recruits he's going to try to bring in. Well, yes, Meeks is going to have some valid reasons, of course, to, to leave UK and to go into the NBA. Because, I mean, the Wildcats did not have the great season last year. But they are bringing in a new coach in Calipari. To, to address that need. Calipari has spent time coaching at the NBA level. He's an established coach at the college level, posting a record of 446 and 13. Only Roy Williams at UNC has won more games than Calipari through 17 coaching seasons. And I'm sure that Jody Meeks could definitely learn a thing or two from him, considering that Calipari learned from uh, Larry Brown, the legendary NBA coach, when he was an assistant with the 76ers. Well, uh, uh, real quick, one thing we also have to hit, mention is what uh, or answer the question here of what is going to be the impact of John Calipari on UK and we've kind of hit on that a little bit but what concerns me most about this is when Jody Meeks he he had said he made the comment I'm going to give him a fair chance he seems like a really good guy and I'm really looking forward to being under his coaching but then he goes ahead and goes to the NBA draft the biggest thing about this though is that it's not definite right now he has until June 15th to remove his name and he actually didn't go with an agent as long as you don't go with that agent, yeah. you don't lose that year of eligibility. So I think that Jody Meeks still could go back. I think he's testing the NBA waters. He's testing to see where he could possibly go in that draft. And if it is pretty high, then I think he should go for it. If it's not, go back to UK. That's great. Play for John Calipari, and maybe they'll make it back to the NCAA tournament. Well, that's what I think. With Calipari coming in, I think he's definitely going to have the Cats playing come next March. And again, uh, one other thing, I think it's going to really help the SEC in the basketball program because you've got, already got Bruce Pearl and Billy Donovan succeeding in the SEC, and you bring John Calipari to UK. That's going to be pretty big for them. Now it's time for our game ball. Who's your game ball go to? My game ball is going to go to Dan Bilesma, the head coach, the interim head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins, just because I'm so pumped up about that 4-1 to win over the Flyers last night. I mean, look what Bilesma did since taking over. The Pens were four games over 500 when he took over from Michelle Therrien. They finished 17 games over, that mar over the 500 mark. Since getting the job, he's 17-3-4, and, and as I just mentioned, he got his first playoff win last night. My final game ball on three and out is going to have to go to Manny Ramirez. Why? Because in the world of inconsistency in sports, only one guy has been consistent, and that's Manny Ramirez. Manny Ramirez has been consistently inconsistent because he has always been Manny. Manny will always be Manny. So I'm going to give my game ball to Manny Ramirez because why? It's, it's more of a sarcastic game ball. Okay, he signs his two-year deal with the Dodgers, and then what does he say? He wants to finish his career in Cleveland. So congratulations, Manny, for getting our game ball here on 3 and Out. We are one-third of the way through. We'll be back after this short break for more 3 and Out. <laughs> 